In this topic, we are going to understand why India temporarily stopped exporting wheat. Because of which the G7 nations, which includes Canada, France, Japan, Germany, Italy, UK and United States, they all collectively criticized India's decision of stopping wheat export. So here we will try to understand what led to this situation, why all of this happened. Alright then, let's get into it. So the first thing that you need to understand is that the global market is down. Prices of commodities are high, fuel prices are high and there is also a global shortage of supplies. Now this situation started from March 2020. Now this situation started from March 2020 when lockdown started due to the pandemic. Like that first wave, second wave and third wave. This way almost two years went just like that. And then Russia-Ukraine war started earlier this year. And since then the market has been either down or stagnant. More than stagnant, it is heading downwards. So overall what you need to understand is that the global market is down and prices of commodities is high. Similarly, the price of wheat has also increased in the international market. That is where India jumped in and said, look, we are going to supply wheat to the world. If you remember on April 15th, the Indian Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar met the United Nations Chief. They discussed many things related to food and energy security. And then Prime Minister Modi spoke to United States President Joe Biden and told him that India can send wheat to other countries if World Trade Organization rules are relaxed. That is where India offered to help countries that are facing food shortage by supplying wheat. If you look at India's wheat production in 2021-2022 to crop season, which ends in June, it is officially projected to be around 106.41 million tonnes. This amount is 3.8 million tonnes less than last year's output. That means this year the production of wheat in India has been comparatively lower to last year. But please don't judge the numbers because even though wheat production in terms of numbers is less compared to last year, it is enough for India and it makes India self-sufficient. So that is why Prime Minister Modi openly said that India can feed the world. Now what happened was in the first week of May, that is in this month, South Asia received strong heat waves and that became the primary reason why wheat production this year in India has been projected to be low. So anyhow, apart from heat wave, there was one more thing that happened and that is prices of wheat in India, that is the domestic prices of wheat went record high and that forced the Indian government to stop its wheat supply to the international market. In other words, when Prime Minister Modi openly said that India can feed the world, this is where things backfired. And India, despite being world's second largest producer of wheat after China, had to stop its export. Because obviously you have to first stabilize your own country's food price before exporting to others. Now let's also try to understand why the domestic prices of wheat went high in the first week of May. If you remember last year in November, the government of India withdrew three farm bills. And if you also remember, farmers mostly from Punjab and some from Haryana created a lot of drama and forced the government to withdraw these farm bills. If you have read those three farm bills, they were actually good. But because of social media, then wrong interpretation by some leaders for political gains, then false narratives were created and many wrong speculations and assumptions were created regarding the bills, which in turn created a negative sentiment among the public, even among the educated citizens. But anyhow, if you have read the second bill, which is called the Farming Produce Trade and Commerce, that is Promotion and Facilitation Bill 2020, it talks about allowing farmers to sell their goods outside the mandi, that is anywhere within the state or outside any state. I have a video on farm bills, I want you to watch that and you will understand about it in much detail. Because earlier what used to happen was agricultural trade could be conducted only in the APMC yards, like warehouses and cold storage or mandis. And all these mandis are controlled by the state government through Agricultural Produce Market Committee, APMC. And this is what used to create restrictions for farmers. Because if you are a large-scale farmer and you want your produce to be protected by the government, then you have to notify APMC or trade with only APMC licensed traders. And a lot of people criticized this bill because they felt that the government is trying to get out of the agricultural business. Just think about it. Farmers have the choice to sell their produce to the private players. Then farmers' income will also depend upon ups and downs of the market. And a lot of people assume that the private players are smart and they will exploit the farmers. So that is the reason why this bill was criticized and the government was blamed. Central-owned Food Corporation of India and state agencies undertake procurement at a minimum support price to meet the requirement under the public distribution system and other welfare schemes. When I say farmers, it includes both small as well as big farmers. Because big farmers have a fear that if the government does not secure their produce, then they will be in huge loss. That is where the whole idea of APMC came into existence. If a farmer sells their produce to APMC traders, then their produce is secured by the government. And these APMCs are controlled by state government. 
APMCs are nothing but middleman brokers. They govern the agricultural market at local level. You can think of APMC as a governing body for local farmers of a particular area. So naturally, there is corruption and politics involved in APMC. And if you look at states like Haryana and Punjab, here the APMC is quite developed. And that is the reason there was so much of drama in repealing the farm bills. Because the Modi government wanted to decentralize the agricultural market. Basically, they wanted to free the agricultural market at local level from the APMCs. So that every farmer, whether it is big or small, they have an option of both selling in Mandi or directly to a private player. So basically, if you see, the farm bills were actually trying to create a one-size-fits-all approach. And this was not liked by the farmers of Punjab and Haryana. Because this second bill, promotion and facilitation bill, would have created a parallel marketplace and legally allowed the farmers to sell their produce outside the APMC mandis. And then, as you know, the state governments or the APMC body would have lost control over the farmers and they would also not legally earn any kind of tax or cess. So anyhow, the point is that the second bill, if it was passed, that would have given a legal support to the farmers to sell their produce outside the APMC mandis. But then you also have to keep in mind that many states have already allowed private markets to purchase from farmers directly, even before the Modi government brought these bills. But the point is that if the farmer bills were passed by the central government, then it would have become a law for every state in the country, which apparently states like Haryana and Punjab were not in favour of, because their states would lose revenue on agricultural trade. That is why so much of drama was created. Anyhow, my main point of telling you all of this was that before 2020, farmers had the option of selling their produce outside the APMC mandis. So what happened was the government procurement of wheat from the farmers this year was low. Why? Because the farmers sold their wheat to private traders who were giving higher price than what the government is giving as MSP. For example, the MSP of wheat was set at 2015 rupees per quintal. Private traders were giving more. Because of that, Kisan apna anaj mandi se bahar bech raha tha, jisse kisano ko adhik kimat mil rahi thi, aur jisse ki unki income bhi badi. Now, when the farmers sold their wheat more to the private traders instead of the government, that led to a severe shortage of wheat in government go-downs. And now that private traders bought more wheat from the farmers at a higher price, naturally the price at which wheat was sold to the consumer also went up. So this was the first problem that emerged. And then there are 8 to 11 states in India where the government of India gives free ration. Usually you will see that you have to pay a certain minimal amount to get ration food. But then there are 8 to 11 states where the government of India gives free ration. In that, wheat is also one of the commodity that is given to the public through ration shop or public distribution system. By the way, PDS is operated jointly by central and state union territory governments through FCI. Now that there is a severe shortage of wheat in government go-downs, naturally government has to cut down the amount of wheat that is supplied to ration shops. And as you know, that will have further compounding effect on families that live below poverty line. So instead of wheat, what the government of India did was, they increased the supply of rice. And as you may know, many people in northern India do not have the habit of eating rice. And that has stirred some political sentiments among the North Indian public. But then what you also have to understand is that when government gives free ration, where does the government get those food items? These are grains and other essential commodities that are bought from the farmers at MSP, minimum support price. So basically, central government has to buy these food items from farmers through taxpayers' money. And then they are stocked in government go-downs in Food Corporation of India. From there, essential commodities are supplied to the public through PDS, public distribution system. So this time, because of the Russia-Ukraine war, price of wheat went high in international market. And then if you see Russia and Ukraine, both are major exporters of wheat. When price of wheat increased in the international market, instead of the government market, the private traders bought more wheat from the farmers, and that too at a higher price. Then government go-down started getting empty, and that is how government of India had to put a stop on the export of wheat. So this is the whole story behind government of India's ban on wheat export. Now as soon as the government of India stopped exporting wheat, because obviously you have to take care of your domestic market prices, so again understand this, India is not facing wheat crisis, only the government procurement of wheat has fallen, due to which private traders have bought wheat from farmers at a higher price, and that has triggered a price rise situation in India's domestic market. So now the question comes why the government did not see this through? Why they failed to procure wheat from the farmers? See, first of all, the Russia-Ukraine war was not in India's hand. So naturally, its consequences will also be not in India's hand. As the war started, stock market, commodity market, capital market, as you know, they operate based on investor sentiments. So this Russia-Ukraine war triggered inflation in almost every country in the world. And that happened to India as well. Because of which private traders offered more price to the farmers. Now, government cannot compete with private traders in setting the price. 
government has something called minimum support price and they will always buy at that price but at the same time farmers also have a choice to sell outside apmc you can't force farmers to sell the produce only to the government so this is where the government procurement fell in front of private traders procurement that is why if the farm bills were passed then the government would have gotten out of the agricultural business because then the problem of msp wouldn't have occurred government had to give no guarantee to farmers produce and the farmers could have easily sold their produce directly to the private traders which they are anyhow doing it today it's just that if the farm bills were passed then it would have got a legal backing but few farmers from punjab and haryana had to politicize this matter for their own personal gains and that is why farm bills never became a law and today even though government has a minimum support price system but still farmers sold most of the wheat to the private traders and that's how everything went out of control and central government has to put a ban on the export of wheat on may 13th and by the way the government of india did not fully ban the export of wheat the government of india will only import on case to case basis for example if a country which is in very very urgent need of food grains then the government of that country can contact the indian government and a government to government deal will occur in the best affordable way ये सब जो है ना ये पूरी बातें कोई बताता नहीं ये सब जानना बहुत ही जरूरी है सो वी द इंडियंस डिड नॉट बैक आउट फ्रॉम अ प्रोमिस टू फीड द वर्ल्ड इट्स जस्ट दैट सम कंडीशंस हैव चेंज्ड ड्यू टू मार्केट अनसर्टेनिटी बट वॉट एवर इज पॉसिबल इंडिया विल डू सो इफ यू सी द कोर प्रिंसिपल ऑफ हेल्पिंग बाई गिविंग फूड स्टिल एग्जिस्ट बट देन द क्वान्टिटी ऑफ सप्लाई इज नॉट द सेम कम्पेयर टू वॉट इट वॉज बिफोर नाउ द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज द ग्लोबल कम्युनिटी दैट इज द जी सेवन मेम्बर्स दे स्टार्टेड क्रिटिसाइजिंग इंडिया बिकॉज इंडिया बैन द एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ वीट so naturally india had to respond because jawab dene ka haq to sabko hona chahiye and again you may think that i am blaming the western countries but what can i do it is what it is so when this russia ukraine war started the stock market capital market commodities market why do you think we got to see so much of fluctuation because the rich nations purchased commodities in huge quantities in excess of what they needed it's called hoarding similarly you must have also heard that when this war started many foreign investors they took out their money from the indian market all foreign investors took out their money and that is why the stock market in india was down and then these rich nations they even imported russian oil heavily and filled up all their oil reserves simultaneously putting sanctions on russia the same thing they did with food commodities european union countries they need wheat because they like to eat bread and other bakery items so what are they doing since march 2022 they are buying and hoarding wheat more than what they need isn't that going to put other countries at risk of going hungry and china is even more smart In the January September period of 2021, China started importing more food than it had since at least 2016. Then the western countries did the same thing with vaccines. When India was supplying COVID vaccines at an affordable price, if you remember United States and Germany, they did not give approval to Indian vaccines because they wanted to sell their vaccines and earn profit. Why would they approve affordable vaccines produced by India? And to my fellow Indians never forget how Britain looted the food grains from India during 1943 Bengal famine. You all know how many Indians died due to hunger. And it is because of British Prime Minister Winston Churchill's policies and not because of drought which many people propagate. Anyhow today even in Afghanistan who is supplying wheat India. But then if you see the global regulation which is the World Trade Organization that is very much in control of the western nations and they just simply look around and see who is doing what. and every country has to take their permission for doing any kind of international trade so basically these rich western nations are not doing anything in terms of humanitarian support all they are doing is pumping money weapons and escalating this war more and more as i said india is donating 50000 tons of wheat to afghanistan india gave 10000 tons of rice and wheat to myanmar india is also supplying food to sri lanka so keeping all of this in mind when g7 countries criticize india for stopping wheat export isn't this hypocrisy If they had shown concern, figured out a way, that would have been okay. But then they criticized India intentionally, and I'll tell you why they did that. Especially the German agricultural minister, because India did not vote against Russia during the UNSC meeting, and India also imported heavily discounted Russian oil. In simple words, India refused to follow the Western narrative and took an independent decision. And obviously, the Western countries did not like it, and that's what has always been reflected in their tone. Western media will never tell you about all of this. In the end I made this small compilation and I've even put this on Twitter last month as you can see the difference is clear I hope you found this video informative thank you for watching it